episode 725, we have a budget presentation from the police. We have the acting chief here. And before we get started, I'd like to thank the acting chief for all his work he's done and stepping up and putting the budget together and, and doing a great job while he's been, since we've had our uh, passing of Chief Hackowitz. So um, I want to thank you for that. And before you start, just so you know. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure someone else is going to I, I would, I would like to make the same motion I had last week. I would like a letter to be put in Damien's file, speaking to the fact of what Mr. Maureen has already said. We talked about it last week. Um, I think the job he did taking over um, after Dennis passed away, um, I hold it in high regards, and I think you should hold your head high. So I'd like that letter to go in his file. I have been super pleased, as you know, with your job, and you stepped right up. This is the second budget you're presenting us. Um, and I thank you very much for the job that you've done. Surely we've appreciated it. I've appreciated it. And uh, the town people have appreciated it also. There's been a lot of <coughs> positive comments about how you've done and what you've done. And thank you. Thank you. We're glad to see that you've lived to tell the tale. That's why we're saying congratulations <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Write that letter quick. <laughs> I did make some modifications here. I'm just going to pass this copy to Thank you. I have enough for everybody. Are you four or five of us? Thank you. Oh, four of us. Thank you. Thank you. This is different than this one. I added a, uh, what it would look like if it was just 2%. Okay. And then the last column there is all going to be Okay. That's the question. Yes. Initially, um, what was requested from Mr. Nixon was that we prepare a budget based on 2% uh, increases pretty much across the board if we could do that. Uh, looking through our budget, I had some concerns and I prepared a budget that obviously showed some significant increases. Uh, that was basically just to get everyone an idea of what we believe the needs are inside our police department. We understand there's some financial restraints. Uh, we're hoping that we can, as a group, come to some agreements on some things as we move forward. Uh, after talking to Mr. Mooring, uh, I realized that everyone needed to see the figures written differently, more of a 2% across the board uh, way of showing how it would look uh, if we were to just kind of disperse the money with only a 2% increase on top of our current budget. And I did not touch the wages uh, because COVID hasn't been decided. There are some wages that have been decided by the union, uh, but I had some concerns plugging those in based on the positions that we were trying to add. I wasn't sure really how to show that money. And uh, after talking to Mr. Morning, it was decided to kind of leave the wages the way they were right now for the time being until we know exactly what type of figures can be plugged in there. Uh, that includes the chief's salary. I wasn't uh, positive on what that would look like either, so I went with what we have in our past year's contract, or our past year's budget, rather. So the figures you hear, see here for the full-time wages and the part-time wages is exactly what it looks like in FY15. 
That doesn't include any core, it doesn't include any step increases, it doesn't include any extra people. That is simply just the baseline, what we already have. Again, with the chief's salary, not really knowing exactly where that's going to go, I left it for $50,000 that was allocated last year for that position. Uh, as you can see, the animal control didn't really change. Uh, Full-time clerical, again, I didn't add any kind of cost of living or step increase to that. Uh, waiting to see exactly how wages are going to go. Overtime. Uh, you can see from my initial proposal, there was a significant increase just based on what clearly is needed, but I uh, moved it back to the original from what we're looking at in 2015 and left at the 103 figure. The training wages really reflect where we should be based on our current staffing. Uh, we've got minimum mandatory training that has to be completed every year between CPR, first responder training, firearms training, in-service training, there's a certain amount of hours that have to be done by every single officer in the department. Granted, some of them work for other departments and they can get their training in other agencies, but we really don't know until the time comes who's going to train with us and who isn't. So we have to budget appropriately so we have the funding in our, in our account to cover everybody if we need to. And since we've added more specials to help try to curb some of the costs in other areas, we also have to train them, and so that just creates more money for us. So that line really is it's necessary that that goes up. Damien, is it okay just to ask a couple questions as you go along? Sure. Yeah, is that right? Stop me if you need to. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with it. Just that um, clarification. So the minimum mandatory training. So you're saying if you have somebody who's part time here and they're part time somewhere else, that um, it's not clear necessarily where they're going to get their training. Is that something that's like negotiated with other agencies, or how does that work? It really could be based on how training is designed annually. It kind of depends on where they work. For example, we have people that work for campuses. Mm -hmm. The training at the campuses may not be identical to the training that we do here, so they may not do firearms, for example, so they have to get firearms here. Mm -hmm. They may have a modified version of, say, an in-service training, but it may not be identical to what we require. And so they may be able to get some training that might be used in lieu of what we would have them do here. Mm -hmm. We won't really know until the time comes exactly what it is that they're getting where they are. Other police departments, uh, it, again, it, it kind of is based on what they're doing there. Are they getting the necessary training to stay certified? Some police departments aren't doing that. We, we, we've been guilty of that in the past ourselves here. So mm -hmm. we're trying to change that standard. We're trying to make sure that everybody stays up on their training. We all stay current. We're all certified. We reduce the liability. Obviously, we have better trained officers. We want to work here. It's more structured. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to kind of look at where they work, what kind of training they're getting. Did they get mandatory training? Do we have to put them through ours? Do they use the same firearm in Shootsbury that they use here? So they have to use our firearm and they train with our firearm in Shootsbury and maybe meet the same qualifications. There's a whole array of things yeah. we have to kind of look at year to year. Everything sort of changes. Okay. This simply is just budget for the minimum mandatory training across the board. But we know that some of it probably won't be spent because they'll get it somewhere else. Okay. All right, thanks. I just didn't understand how that all works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the radio repair maintenance, you see in 2015 was at 11, uh, 188. We reduced it by 2,000. The intent there was to combine two accounts between our department and fire to make sort of one united account to take care of the radios. Since we've kind of replenished and redone all our radios, at the same time, it kind of made sense we had an account to draw from to fix radios. Uh, unfortunately, Chief Spank Nemo could not be here tonight, so I can't speak to how much he wants to put into this particular account, but he and I did have a side conversation. We agreed that the 2000 figure would be somewhere in the area where we would need to contribute. Uh, so that was the plan of reducing the 2000. It wasn't to go away, it was to combine with one of his accounts and make sort of a joint public safety radio maintenance account. Mm -hmm. uh, office maintenance, we kept the same, just you know, based on what we've seen for expenditures, uh, certain contracts that have to be covered year to year. Police cruiser maintenance, uh, as most of you know, was cut pretty significantly last year. 
there's some concerns with that. We're not exactly certain at this point if we're going to see a new cruiser. We're hopeful that we will because we've got some problems with our existing cars right now. Uh, some of the costs for repairs is far and above what we can afford at this point. We actually have one car offline. Um, the 15000 that we have, we haven't necessarily spent a large portion of it just yet, but we're coming into the spring months, which is when we do our tires, brakes, ball joints, things like that start to go. Um, so last year we saw a real increase in repairs since the end of the fiscal year. I don't exactly have a projection what that number will look like. But I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere closer to the twenty to 23000 range. Initially, I put in for the 23, but once I reallocated the funding, I had to reduce it back to the 21, 570 because we just didn't have enough money. Animal control didn't change. Do you see there's two maintenance accounts for that, Damien? There's one at the top under police chief salary and then another one down below. Is that the same account? Or for animal control? Yeah. I actually eliminated the one up top. I don't know why there was two listed. I don't actually know that's huh. there. Um, okay, so it was supposed to have been eliminated. So one of them is eliminated. Yeah. I think that was taken off of the, the actual descriptive page. Yeah, so just kind of right here. I noticed that while I was going through it. I don't know why there was two separate accounts. It's the 5300 that's new. Yeah, and that up was taken now, off of... It's just been the 5113 account up till now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> taken off of the descriptive page. Does that have anything to do with the care of the, our dog? No, that's no, animal no. control. No, I don't, I don't know no. where it came from. Okay. So which one are we taking off? Um, 5300 or 5113? I believe it's the 5300 that's going away. Okay. The actual yeah. You know, I would guess it's the 5113 because isn't the 5100 the salaries? Yes. Right. So. Stipend, yes. So, but it's not. So it should be in there. I don't have a copy of the there. budget, but I did notice in the in the original budget that it was duplicated. Um, was there a stipend paid to the officer who handles the dog? There is a small amount. It's, it's twelve hundred dollars. I'm not sure why it's duplicated on here. I'm not sure. Oh, that's for the animal control officer. And that's not for. Oh, so you're talking about canine. That's not the canine. No, it's no, not for the canine. That's no, animal control. Right. That's mm -hmm. not the canine. Probably the accountant would oh, yeah, look control expenses no, are on the next page. Yeah. We can check so, with Gail. Right. So, we should so the one the one that I kept was uh, fifty one thirteen. Right. <clears throat> That's the one I have in my descriptive page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's attached. I eliminated the fifty three hundred. Okay. Okay. The legal services is something that I thought maybe we should discuss. Um, Entirely up to you all what you want to do with it, but I did notice that most of the expenses were being generated by um, Mr. Nixon's office. We're not generating most of the expenses. It made more sense to kind of reallocate it to his budget. We can keep it if it makes it easier for the town, but it, well, it what was, was it put in there for to begin with? Each uh, department that has a union associated with it, uh, the, the legal issues are usually labor related, uh, and uh, so. This is a system that was set up before I showed up that, uh, that those costs would be allocated to DPW uh, dispatch of police. Should that be back in our office? Because we do all the legal services anyway with the unions or whatever else. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure of the history of this account because it predates me, but I think the intention was that it, uh, it meant that the people who were supervising those departments had some skin in the game. Does anybody know what the balance is right now in that account? Yeah, it's 1,067 has been expended year to date, looks like. Could it, can I point out too, in the beta art itself, it says legal slash negotiator services, and those aren't necessarily attorneys. Right. So, yeah, so if we had to go to arbitration, we have to pay uh, $1,200 for each arbitration. That's where that uh, cost would come from. 
Well, I think to Joyce's point, there's, there are two ways to look at it. One is that this is a class theoretically under the control of the town administrator who's allocating where the need might arise. But on the other hand, if you want to look at the true cost of having a police department, negotiations are part of that cost. And so right. you want to kind of put the cost back in there. But it's like, then you also have a chief responsible for a budget line item that he doesn't really have direct control over, other than the, you know, trying to run a happy I think department. I think I can only guess the reason why it was put there is so it was an easy reference for someone, you know, like if, if somebody wants to sit down and say, well, what does, it, what does it cost us to negotiate contracts in the town of Hadley? They can either go to each individual budget and see that money's budgeted for each department, or they can go back and go through the litany of legal expenses on the town budget and have to back all that out. I can, I imagine that's why it was done that way. Probably just for quick, easy reference. Yeah. yeah. I have no problem. So what, why don't we, the way it is. Why yeah, we just, I mean, uh, yeah, why don't we just think about it more and decide where we're gonna put it. Mm -hmm. So for now, we'll leave it out. Yeah, I don't have strong feelings one way or the other, but just thinking of, just sitting back and thinking about what was it like 10 years ago and some of the major uh, personnel issues that we were dealing with back then. Right. Um, I think we expended more than that. Well, even in 2012, it was $12,000. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit more it's than not that. ancient history. That's, no. yeah. well, it may make sense to consolidate police and dispatch and have one mm -hmm. legal expense yeah. account for the two. You mm -hmm. do that too. It's 12000 Well, there's no, two separate contracts no, 12, there too. $12,000 in 2012. That line item. I, th I think more it's just work, how, how we keep track of expenses and signs. So if we determine that we can keep track of our expenses without having dedicated accounts, then we can lump that into one big account. But if we can't do that, then we should probably keep it in the department. So it's we just. should be able to track where the money goes. Oh, yeah, we should. It would be about 5000 total, right? I, I should be able to do a lot of things. <laughs> I did consult with a couple of the police chiefs who said they don't. They don't hold on to legal funds, it's all controlled by the town. Mm -hmm. If that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, for the tuition meeting and training line, again, that was increased. It's designed to basically just enhance our training. Tuition costs have gone up. Um, we're really trying to get the best training for our people right now. This line is also the line that we use for expenses for a police academy, for example. Or we just Sign an offer for the police academy. The tuition alone is three thousand dollars. That comes out of this line. So it puts a big dent in it. Uh, it also covers medical expenses. If he has to go to the doctor in advance, and it's cost for that, it comes out of this line. The telephone. Right now, we're well over in that account. We've been trying to find ways to reduce it. I think we've come up with something. A recent conversation with someone from Verizon who assures us that we are in the wrong uh, account type for some reason, and he can reduce our payment by quite a bit, uh, as much as maybe 25 to 50% on some of the lines. So I expect that number to go way down. However, since we're so far over, I didn't want to budget too low for that account until we see exactly what the savings will be. Will you be locked into that? Once you change over to the new account, will you be locked into that for two years, one Didn't year? Did you say Verizon? Yeah. I think that's your answer. <laughs> it's, a, it's like some type of mass government account, I believe is what it is. Well, no, we're talking wireless versus Verizon. Yep. My understanding is Verizon landline is supposed to go out of business, but I don't understand. Right. Well, we'll see what kind of deal they get. And then we, we had talked, we can talk about um, a VoIP system, voice over the internet, maybe looking into that. We haven't gotten very far with that, I believe. Uh, no, we're working on budgets, but uh, we, can, we can pick that up again. Well, we were talking about it in our little special group of the tribe board that that was a, probably a low hanging fruit thing where if we actually invested some capital money, we could wipe out the cost of phones. And then none lab is seem to know a lot about it. Or we have done that so, in Franklin County, yeah. so that would be very useful to tap into her for that. Mm -hmm. 
I just didn't want. I just didn't want to make sure we're locked into like a two-year contract. I don't believe it, uh, the rep I spoke to made it sound like pretty much every uh, municipality in the area was on this program except for Hadley. <laughs> so I don't know if it's just an okay. oversight. You couldn't even find our account anywhere. It's kind of unusual to him even. Well, that was nice of them to save us some money. So hopefully, so hopefully we can get something out of it. It doesn't happen that often. Uh, posted we reduced just based on current expenses. Uh, we have found a way to save some postage. In the meantime, we're doing all our accident reports electronically now. I think it's submitted uh, online. Mm -hmm. It's working itself out when it and we started about a month ago, so some of the wrinkles of the iron now are starting to work now, so we have to see some savings there. Advertising, uh, I just bounced back to 350. If anybody's advertised anything in the newspaper in the last few years, I realized pretty quickly last year it's really expensive. Uh, I initially had bumped that line up. We had to cut costs somewhere, so I guess we take advantage of the free advertisement where we can get it if we have to. Office supplies. Uh, quite honestly, there's an there's a increase in that line because of the, the, the advanced technology just made supplies so expensive. I mean, just to replace like an ink cartridge and a printer or something is really expensive. We can try to find ways to cut costs. Uh, some companies will lower the cost, but it takes a lot longer to get the ink cartridges in, so we have been working on ways to do that. But in the meantime, we've definitely seen some of the increases there. Would they be eligible to do? Collaborative. Um. Yeah, so I, I was just thinking we should have Jenny talk to Joe because she's uh, worked out a very good system there. I know we've had some some of the department head meetings. We've discussed things like that. Yeah. It's a little harder for us being in a different building and not having you know, the same means to communicate with people, but I'm sure we can arrange something, maybe group order or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, gasoline obviously is dropping, but based on our current expenses and the fear that it's probably going to rise not, not too long from now. We budgeted a little bit over. Office or other police supplies uh, has been pretty consistent for us. We didn't raise that at all. Uniforms. Well, the other supplies contracted or is that like a contract number for a specific item or? For other supplies? Yeah, I mean, it's it's mainly for anything that's not covered in these other lines, basically. So there's no agreements or contracts for some service that just paid for on that? No. Uh, there may be, there's one line we pay a fee to the jail out of, I have to double check, I'm not sure if it's this one, it's like a $6,000 fee in July we pay for the regional lockup. I'll double check on that, I'm not sure if it comes out of this one, I don't think it does. Police uniforms, this line uh, is basically just the bare minimum by contract. Uh, full-timers are allocated a certain amount of money as are part-timers. And based on the amount of full-timers and part-timers that we have, if we don't allocate this much money and they all want to spend the max allowance, we won't have enough money if we don't change the figure there. Uh, this is something that we talked about last year, had some concerns. We haven't seen it go over yet. But a lot of guys tend to wait till the end of the year and go out and spend what they have left. So that line may go over pretty quickly in May, June time. We'll see it go way up over that $30,000. So how much is it per officer? For a full-timer, it's 1100 For a part-timer, you automatically get 375 and an additional 50 if they work over a certain amount of hours. Since we've been encouraging part time to work more, we definitely will have a few of them that reach that extra 50 mark. So we have to budget for that as well. They may not all get there, but it's good to know until we get towards the end of the year and know how many hours they're going to accumulate. Well, that number you'll see was reduced slightly, and the reason for that is because when I originally put the request in, it was budgeted around the two extra positions that I had requested in the full-time wage line. So I removed those positions. I reduced it by $2,500. Uh, meals and mileage we've seen go up. Uh, and that's mainly just due to more training. 
most of the good training is somewhere else. It's not around here most of the time. Most of our guys are traveling out to Grafton or uh, the casinos are having some training now. Connecticut, we've had some people go to New Hampshire for training. Um, mileage, we've been using our admin car as much as we can. Occasionally, we just we can't uh, allow it to go out of town as long as we need it for, or whatever the reason might be. Meals, everybody gets a certain amount of meal allowance by contract allocated to them daily if they're doing out of town training. Um, so we have to basically plan for what the expenses might be on that. We didn't increase it much, but I expect that it'll stay around that 400 figure for a while. <coughs> the dues, uh, this, this line is mainly for the dues that the police chief pays. Um, I didn't see too much of a problem with it last year. I expect the dues to increase too significantly. We just left it the way that it was. Animal control expenses, this is the expenses that the animal control officer uses for if we get a stray dog and we lock them up, we get a dog food for extra leashes, things of that nature. Uh, this is basically just for supplies for animal control. We did see an increase this year. For some reason, there's been more animal complaints, cats, dogs, I'm not really sure why, but uh, so supplies went up. Uh, you know, if we have to, we'll try to drop them another line if we go over the 200. The office equipment, we left the same. And the police cruiser, I'm kind of hoping goes to the capital article. So I removed the request from this question. Any questions or comments? the time of night or something, but what, what are we doing on the police cruisers again? We took them out to the Capitol last time. Right. Last, um, last year we moved it to a Capitol item. Right. Um, we kind of basically went 360 degrees from the way we've been doing it for, I don't know, probably 10, no longer than that, probably 15 years. It was a long, for a long time, the town of Hadley, we wanted it in the police budget um, so that we could rotate the cars. Um, I think it's still the intent of everybody. I know it's the chief's intent and I know it just makes sound business practice to keep that rotation going so that every four or five years you're rotating cars on a yearly basis that we're not buying two or three cars at one time. I mean, it's crazy to do that. So. Yeah, I was just questioning the placement of the. Well, uh, like I said, if it's not if it's not going to stay in the police budget, then you're going to have to make sure it's in the capital budget every year. So and we don't have a capital budget right now. That no. has it in. I don't know what the update. Well, I mean, it would be when he update when the chief updates his capital budget, he'd have to make sure it's there, basically. But that's where it went out of last year. Yeah. So. Two. Well, last year we last did year two. two. Yeah. Last year was a catch up year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how many cars do we actually have? Uh, well, we're down a car. We got no, no, no. How many cars do we need? Up, down, or sideways? How many do we actually need? That's have right. Total yeah, that's a long yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. There's one of those cars is a administrative car. It's not a responding car. Well, the chief's car is, and then we have a, an unmarked that in the, that we had that we use for admin training, things like that. That's not the nine. That's it. Oh, is it? I think it is the nine. I believe it is. We've spoken to Officer Cook 
about it. He um, is the one that usually does the quotes on our cruisers and keeps track of mileage and things like that. And uh, when I spoke with him the last time we ordered those two cars out of Capitol, he suggested to me that hopefully another two the next go around and get us kind of back on track. So if we got one, we would be slightly behind, but we've been much farther behind than that in yeah. the past. The car that's down, has that been a problem car right along? I mean, <coughs> or just it has an issue that needs to be fixed? It's got old, and it wasn't one of those lemon cars. There's right. some that are always going out for service. This was just one that sort of just got old. Okay. Well, like I said, Chief, um, if, if we're going to, the new way of looking at it is we're going to take it out of the police budget because we want this to be a pure operating budget and we don't want capital items in it then just make sure you have that in your capital budget when you submit that, and we should be all set. I think, to answer your question, Mom, I think that's what happened. Last year when we were going through the budget cycle, yeah, we pulled, we all, pulled capital. all capital yeah. out, um, even if it had gone different than the way we've done it in the past. So I would think we would continue down that path of keeping capital items out of operating yeah. budget that way people can say that's a true operating budget and there's not capital items yeah in. I would as well but so just, just mentioning it now just make sure it's in the capital yeah. budget so is there anything any other questions about this budget because I want to ask the chief to do one more thing about this budget well yeah, I have kind of a general like a broad question um, just looking back at the um, the VADAR reports that show the year-by-year -year comparison, and I, and I remember, remember from some budgets where we specifically added into different line items, but if I look at the expended column compared to what's on uh, this proposed budget, it seems like there's some pretty big swings between the history of what we've actually expended and what we're requesting now. So I didn't know when you were doing this budget, did you, you were you mainly focused on this current year, or were you also kind of looking back at prior years? Or? Uh, I don't have access to VAR at this point, so I can't speak to the actual numbers you're looking at. I know that I have looked at some past numbers. Um, the ones that concerned me the most were the ones I was more focused on. Yeah. And I was kind of focusing on the last year and what we're kind of looking at for expenses this year is really what I was looking at. Okay. Well, just to give you an example, like the, um, the wages part-time officers. Yeah. You know, so we, we're looking at this going back four years, you know, um, allocated 122, but we only expended 68. Next year allocated 154, we only expended 54. And I remember there was some, you know, what, what bucket was stuff getting charged to, but if you look at it in the aggregate, it looks like we didn't actually expend until this past year, I think, nearly as much as um, had been put into the budget. But what, why didn't you have access to Vader? I was on the chief's old computer, and that computer went out about nine months ago. <laughs> and we're in the middle of upgrading all of our computers right, right now. Right. And so yeah. we'll to, put it on there. to answer to answer your question, Molly, yeah. um, if you go back four or five years and you look at the police budget, you have full time wages, you have part time wages, and then you have basically the overtime count, and those are your, your three major players. Um, you will see that the part-time wages was always budgeted with a massive number and it wasn't necessarily expended. But if you went down to the overtime number, there'd be an overtime number, but the actual expended amount in overtime would be over that. Right. Um, That's what I was and at so that was the offset that yeah. uh, Chief Huckowitz used his part-time account as an offset to the overtime account. Mm -hmm. Now. That's not ideal because you're covering up an overtime problem or you have an overtime issue and it's easy to address it if you just over budget part time and then use that money to pay it off later. Mm -hmm. I think last year when uh, Acting Chief Shanley took over and we went through that whole exercise of balancing the budget, mm -hmm. we tried to bring the numbers and put them where they are. So if we budgeted, say, 100000 for 
part-time salaries. We wanted to see that 100,000 spent on part-time salaries. And we also wanted a real overtime number so that everybody was under the understanding of what the actual overtime in the department was costing us. Yeah, because so 2015, I, to your point, it looks like we're, you know, just this is a little bit more than six months we're yeah. looking at, but we're roughly on track on the part-time wages, but we already know the overtime's a problem. Right, mm -hmm. so I think starting with last year when we had, um, when Damien was involved, um, you know, halfway through the year, we said, look, we want to, we want a real overtime number because I think, you know, going back to our 10 things that we're going to talk about at our next tri board meeting, I, that'll be number, one. Be number one. It'll be, it'll be in the top three yeah. anyways. But before you can have a discussion, you've got to have an idea of what is, the real numbers are. So that's why there's a, like a fundamental shift. Mm -hmm from say 2012, 2013 to last year's numbers or e and even this year's. Yep. And Molly, to, to talk about the increase, you're gonna see an increase because wages changed pretty significantly in the last contract. Mm -hmm. Part-time wages went up quite a bit and we started to utilize part-timers as much as we really could and we brought four brand new part-timers on which were getting paid wages out of that that were, just two of them are still in training, actually three of them are. So training wages are being paid out that wouldn't have been paid out the year before. I think it's the first year we've had four people training kind of the whole year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at this, pretty much at the same pace, and so you're going to see more expenses coming out of that account. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been using the part-time people more often for uh, court officer tasks, and so you know, you're going you're to see that number start to creep up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um. Well, there's a big difference between it. I know what you asked for and then and what you're putting out this two percent budget. Um, can you tell us what the impact of it? I know your requested budget did have some additional officers, um, which clearly you know can't be covered by a two percent increase. Are there um, would this by keeping the wages the same the year before? Does that does that mean that uh, there would be need to be any layoffs with a two percent limited increase? I think what we want to know is the full. What is the impact of limiting your budget to two percent? The way that it is now, not putting money on top of that four seventy three number you're saying. Yeah, it's no colas, no colas, no rate, no stuff raises. Is really the way I see it. We yeah, stated the two percent. I don't think it's layoffs. You're basically just not giving any a wage increase at all. And you know, contractually, there's some obligations for the union because they've already been agreed upon. As far as the coal, I don't, I don't know what, where that stands. But, mm -hmm. So it would basically just be a flat no raise year, <clears throat> if I understand the question correctly. But, right. In order to give increases, that would may involve layoffs, but it would mean a no increase year. In order to keep the entire budget within two percent, that would mean no raises for your officers this year at all. I think that's something that I mean the impact is something we definitely want to know. It's not just about numbers. Uh, you know, we know that our keeping the budget within the revenues is what our our goal is, but we also have to know really what that means to the budget. And um, um, I think it's always good to know what you you know what your goals are for the department and that you'd like to hire additional, but I, I think it's equally important for people to know that when the budget is limited, what, what, what the problem may be to a department. And you're looking at no wage increases, so the problem you look at is retention. What's in it for the people? Why are they going to stay here? There's no lateral movement, no upward movement. There's no wage increases. Why would they stay here? As it is now, they can go to UMass for $5 an hour more or $6 an hour more. So. That's after we paid the three thousand dollars to train them, right? So right. You, know, you risk losing quality employees. Right. right. And then, with the, with the two percent budget you present us, you still have a huge overrun in the overtime account, correct? <laughs> What's that six month number, Molly, right now, no, or as of time. December? It is eighty three thousand through January twentieth. The date of this report. Okay, so you have overtime wages budgeted for 16 at 103,000. If we were to keep things status quo, 
you're still looking at uh, probably one hundred and sixty-five, hundred and seventy thousand dollar expenditure in that line. Item. So you're going to be short seventy grand, say, in sixteen in that line item if we go with a level two percent budget. Is that right. fair to say? Yes. You'll start to see some improvement in that line only because right now there's a vacancy. Right. Uh, you know, with the transition, right. the vacancy will get filled with a full timer, and so some of that overtime will be reduced. Right. But it will still be overtime. You'll still see a decrease. And it won't be it won't be one hundred three thousand dollars worth either. No. It might go down to one twenty five, one thirty five, somewhere in that range. And we looked at the, the Sergeant Mason and I looked at the gradual progression of overtime from two thousand and five to now. And you can see where it jumps from like a sixty-four thousand dollar range to what the department's allocated over a five-year period to about one hundred thirteen thousand, and then it goes backwards. And that's what's being allocated. So somewhere along the way, the town was continuing to allocate the right amount of funding. And if it had continued, we'd probably be somewhere near where we need to be. Right. It only started to go backwards, and now we're not allocated enough money. It's not like we're doing anything differently. Wages increase. You know, staffing increases for different reasons. Calls and increase. Increased. Is it different functions that occur because of more court time, investigative time, whatever it might be? Everything you can see where it gradually goes up and then all of a sudden it stops and takes a plunge backwards. So that's just about the money that's being allocated. So the overtime hasn't changed in 15 years, it just right. keeps progressing. Now, is this the time to ask about his originally requested budget for the needs? That was my last comment. Okay, I'll let you go then. So, anybody else want to? So, just to wrap up, um, you actually requested in your budget the request for salaries goes from 473 to 542. You want to explain a little bit of what you're proposing in that change, please? Certainly. It's, a, uh, it's sort of the beginning of a, what I would consider a five year plan, I guess. Uh, the intent was to hire two new positions, two new police officer positions, and at the same time promote an existing position. So we have three line supervisors as opposed to the chief and two supervisors. Uh, we're not adding a third full time position. You're just allocating enough money to basically promote somebody. Whatever the promotion is, patrol to the sergeant, sergeant to lieutenant. Uh, but it does create more supervision, reduces liability, puts a supervisor on every shift for the department. The two additional positions you essentially end up in wherever the chief wants to put those people. But you know, we're really looking for an investigator right now. Um, we have a number of needs school resource needs, uh, court needs, administrative needs. And there's a whole slew of things we could talk about and we can put these people to work right away. Uh, but again, it's more of like a five year plan. We're looking at more of like four people over five years is what we're kind of hopeful for. Uh, and looking at our stats, Compared to surrounding communities, you know, it's, it's pretty comparable what we're trying to do. Uh, you can see our stats are well above what most of the other agencies are, and they have about the same staffing or more than we do. Most of them have more supervision than we do. Even some of the smaller departments have more supervisors than we do. Uh, so our plan is to kind of get to where we need to be for what we're doing right now as an agency. Uh, and it's important to, you know, to keep the, the professionalism, uh, Keep the, the bodies in the house, the retention, keep quality people on board. You know, we've got to start moving forward. Uh, again, we understand the financial constraints in town, but this is really necessary. It's something we talked about last year. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it for, for 10 years. You know, if you look back in 2001, you compare our stats to now, we've seen about a 100% increase in statistics. Our call volume has gone up over 100%. Our staffing is down by 10%. We've had one new full-time position in a 15-year period. So now how do these positions affect the rest of your budget? So most of your overtime is someone calls in sick or someone takes a day off or things like that. You know, we allow people to be sick. We allow people to have vacation time. So how would this help that on that side? Would it help, do you think? It depends on how the department, I don't want to speak for the new chief coming in, it really kind of depends on where those positions are added, uh, how they're put on board, and if you can somehow plan a way to backfill positions, you might be able to save some overtime. For example, if you have, uh, you generate a new supervisor position on days, 
put that person in place, there's three people on and somebody calls out sick, well, you may just ride with the supervisor and a patrolman for that one day. Because our minimum staffing requires that we have two people on a day shift. So, for example, you might see a decrease in overtime. Um, certainly, you might see an increase in things like training expenses because now you have to train two new people. Uh, you'll see an increase in uniform allowances because you have to provide uniforms for two new people. Um, so, there's, there's pluses and there's negatives, but I think overall you're going to see a huge benefit to the community because right now our resources are limited. We're not getting investigations done the way we need to. We're not getting the people out in the field for proactive police work the way that we need to. We need to be out in the community more. We need to be in the schools more. We get, you know, thousands of compliments every time we do some type of function in town. So the more bodies, the more we can be out there, and it's going to benefit the, the town tremendously. I don't, you know, it's unlimited value, really, when you start to think about the growth. I'd like to bring out, too, that uh, we did this badge quest review many years ago, and we really haven't done anything to promote this badge quest in, well, we've done some. We've hired some part time, but not to the amount that was suggested by Badge Quest. Um, for the safety of the town and for what we're doing, a lot of these things needed to be implemented, but budget constraints, we haven't done it. Uh, a second person in command uh, was talked about uh, within that Badge Quest, and uh, I feel is the most important, too, to have somebody else responsible for when the chief is not there. Um, you need another go-to person. Um, that's just a natural chain of command, and we don't have it. Um, so th these are things that we really truly need to look at within our uh, police department, and it's our safety complex total. Uh, public safety in general. Pu public that's safety in general. So uh, we need to take a hard look at this at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we heard it. We heard it last week. We had people coming in from out of town who were interviewing for the chief's job who did simple research on the department and they said, man, your guys are busy. <laughs> and then probably when they looked at what was there for staffing as far as you know supervision and the actual bodies there, they, they were actually shocked that that amount of work was getting done. Um, I, know, I know you guys get multiple shoplifting calls all the time. Um, you have identity theft, which isn't a traditional crime that's easy to investigate. Um, so I mean, I think it's at some, I, it, I think it's reached a point now where um, you're either gonna keep paying in tremendous amounts of overtime to a bunch of overworked professional officers, or you need to sit down and iron out a plan to add positions that you think are most advantageous to the department, but that have a financial benefit of reducing overtime when it can. Um, obviously, if everybody gets their wish list out, we can do everything at once, but that's not practical. So I think it's absolutely critical that we, the police commission, commissioners sit down, take a hard look at that department, look at their needs, um, and figure out the best way to try to start on, say, a four or five year plan to raise that department where it needs to be. Um, I think it's absolutely critical that we train officers, but think about it. If we're going to pay, if we're going to take the money to train an officer, send them through the full-time academy, tie up a seven or eight thousand dollar investment in that officer, have him work here for a year or two, and then get a job in I don't know South Hadley. You don't get that seven or eight thousand dollars back. So you really have to, you know, let's think about how we're going to do things long term. You want to talk about a five-year plan? Let's put people in position and hope that they stay 5, 10, 15 years so that you're getting your investment on them. I, th I think there's a lot to be said to that. But if we're going to try and gain control of this overtime number, we're really going to have to sit down and strategize as to how to do it. And I think it's critical that it's done based off of the needs of the department 
and then how does that fit into efficiency as far as financials? So, um, in, in that spirit, I um, just want to throw out maybe a request for some additional information, and I don't know how, you know, how it will if it's possible to get it and, and all that stuff, but I think, you know, a couple of ways to look at resource allocation. Um, you know, one way is to look at, you know, we need X number more FTEs, you know, full-time equivalents or whatever, um, to get a job done. Another way to look at it is to say, these are the specific services that are currently not being provided, like you mentioned, investigative work and things like that. Um, so I, I'd rather kind of start at the service level and say, these are the services that are, uh, in, in, a, you know, in our professional opinion, are, are we're dropping the ball on the town of Hadley and we're not providing this to our residents in businesses. Um, and then there may be a variety of ways to skin the cat, so to speak. And I'm always just reluctant if, you know, if we're going to make additional hires. Um, and I sat through the police interviews, so I mean, I, I've got a better handle now on, on um, where there's some areas of weakness, if you will, and holes that need to be plugged than I certainly did before. But um, I think we need to look at it that way. Um, these are the services that have to be provided and then here are different ways that we can go about it because to put it in the context of how Howard always starts our meetings reminding us that we have a huge deficit right. um, you we're going to have to get creative and it is a you know two to five year plan that we're looking at here so you know I'm hoping that that's something that you're probably already talking about and working on together um, and then the other thing is in terms of the calls, I think what would be really helpful too is, you know, there are these um, reports that come up with the, the call reasons and things like that. I don't know if there's a way in the database, is there a way to kind of sort it by call reasons so we can see, you know, like follow-up investigation, traffic stop, fire services, and that'll give us a much better handle too on how much is the activity over the shoplifting and stuff at the malls and you know maybe we do need to go asking for some additional money elsewhere what well, specifically the things like that but are geared towards you know, I, if you mass, break them out say traffic break them out. traffic accident yeah. you property check right you know, yeah we just did the vote on town meeting floor about that and how many times are you having to go well actually some, that would be a false alarm code or things like that right. but property check larceny um, but in here, we also have, you know, report writing. Um, I'm assuming report writing is due to a somebody get off the road. Yeah, they yeah. Lengthy yeah. reports, so they're not in service at that. I mean, they can go in an emergency, but yeah, well-being checks. You know, I think it's really, it would be extremely useful to see where that level of activity is kind of increased over the time. And I don't, I don't know what limitations there are in the system. I'm just you know, seeing the raw data come up this way, but anything you can provide would be really helpful. And what type of time frame are you looking at as far as like you want a year out, like or you want a five year time frame of the call volume? Whatever helps you tell the story that you're trying to tell, I guess is the way that I would put it. Um, you know, we're looking at an increase in costs over a multi-year period, and I don't, I don't think you need to go back five or 10 years, but certainly to the extent we're saying that the call volumes increased that much, let's see where it is. And again, try to figure out, you, you, know, you either then need to provide more resources and assume that that volume is going to continue, or we need to address the underlying cause of some of that volume and see if we can diminish the volume. I mean, I don't know. Well, we jumped back. Uh doing some of these statistics, we jump back to the 2001 year, because that's the last time we had the full-time spot. At the time, it was obviously decided by the town and the department there was a need there. So we used that time frame compared to this time frame, and we saw a really significant increase with no increased staffing. So I didn't know if we were looking at you know, something like that, comparing the last time we added somebody to now, where you just want sort of a gradual progression comparison. We can, we can do it up a couple different ways, however it works. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys know the data better than... And it seems like the more of the way the business world today is to hire uh, part-time people with the opportunity to increase their hours as such, but not have to pay them the full-time benefits. So, I mean, you've done that. You've hired four new people, um, which was supposed to take off some of the burden of the overtime. Um, so those are things that we'll, we'll look at, too. 
the problem we're running into with part-time people is that they have other jobs. That they're not guaranteed yeah. hours, right? Per right. se, like you can't come in as a part-time which sounds like you get 20 hours this week. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. You might get eight. You might get 40. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is they stick around for a year or two, and then they decide I'm going to go take a full-time job somewhere, go work somewhere else, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And now we invest in somebody else to move up the ladder. That's what we're, we're seeing, and we're actually looking at the possibility of one or two people leaving right now. Full-timers are going to have more accountability, there's more skin in the game, there's more of an investment on their part. They're likely, I'm not putting you on part-timers by any means, but likely better trained over the long haul. Certainly. Right? Yes. We've got some great part-time part people, mm -hmm. and some that have hung in there for a long yeah. time. You know, and, but those people tend to be the ones that have solid full-time jobs somewhere else. Right. And so they just rely on a couple extra hours here and there. Mm -hmm. you know, the ones that really are in it to be police officers, they're just looking for the next best job. Mm -hmm. So is there any other more questions about the police? When does the new chief come on? You haven't decided yet. You got an idea? Soon. Soon. A few months? No, I <laughs> imagine it'll be before then. Um, right? We're in January. Two's too much. Two's too screw, probably. Not enough to be involved in this budget cycle. Uh, uh, I, I think he's pretty involved now, between from what I've been hearing. They've been working together, I understand. Correct? Yes. Totally best we can. You're probably relatively new to it, though, right? Very much so, yes. Yeah. A lot of this was done before you made the decision, but I kept them in a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, I'm, and I'm guessing that the... I'll, I'll speak for you, Howard, even though it may not be what you're thinking. I mean, I, I would presume, I mean, clearly the new chief is going to have to own this budget going in. <coughs> so, and to that end, there may be some other ideas that you have that haven't been implemented in it. But as we all know, this is the first round. <laughs> so I'm assuming that there's going to be more opportunity for Damien and, and Mike to continue to work on this. Well, will there be an opportunity for the new chief to get wrapped up in it? Yeah, Mike is the new chief. I, okay. Right. I believe. Yeah, that's Before what town meeting, I definitely, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Is that a better answer? That works. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for myself. The new chief is going to own this budget. So whatever it takes for him to get involved, I'm assuming yeah. is going to happen. I mean, unfortunately, yes, right. he is going to own it. Right, yeah. Fortunately or unfortunately. Fortunately. Well, he's going to tell you all we're all owning it. Well, yeah. I was going to say, of course, let's, <laughs> let's not put it all on Mike's shoulder. We all own decide it. on it first. Exactly. But, but the worst thing that can happen is to, in any organization is to have somebody handed a budget that they say, oh, I wouldn't have done it that, you know, I mean, and then, so that wouldn't be a service, well, that's good what, service to anybody. That's what Damien had to do that's last true. year. That's actually yeah, kind of fun. You know, he had to work that's from the fun. bottom up. So, you know, kudos to him for getting it done. And, you know, I'm sure that as a team that they'll work together on it. And that's what this all about is, it's teamwork. Right. So. But you know, you give him the budget and something you gotta make do with it, you know, he gets a whole bunch of excuses for one year. You know. So well, that, well, as yeah, the as the new guy is kinda of fun. You know? I don't think he takes excuses. <laughs> yeah, he's fun. Good. See? That's why I used to. Yeah. yeah. He, he had a lot of excuses. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, let's go to communications please. Detail, the actual postings of what's in. Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, without having the radar, and um, you know, Damien put in so much mm -hmm. time putting this together, we haven't really had a, a lot of chances to link up. But that's really the one thing that I'm I hope Damien knew that radar was available to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you said computer. I used it last year. Yeah, it's, it's just the way things guide. fell with getting new computers and things yeah. like that. But that's really one of the things. Feel that free I to go see and see her anytime if you get the What's information that? you need. You know. We get the, the monthly reports of what's you know what's been allocated, what's been spent, what's still left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
but she can do backtracking for you too if you need it. So the communications budget is not quite as lengthy. Again, on the salaries, we left them uh, where they are in FY15 for now until we know more about wage increases. And our groundskeeping, uh, we saw a reduction in that line so far this year. I think it had something to do with uh, how much the person mowing along was charging us. So that was a plus. We kept that the same. Custodial wage is initially, uh, the intent here was to add some hours to the current custodial hours. Right now, it's only in the area of about 10, 10 hours a week he's allocated. If you, if you break it all down, that's just not enough. Just to interrupt here for a second. Uh, I thought that the town just put out a bid for a custodial. Why are we doing separate for police? Why, is, why don't we wrap all the custodial stuff in the into the town building. We can do that. That's that's a decision that hasn't been made. Uh, but if, uh, there's no reason why we can't do that. I thought we did talk about that. No? We have. That's one of the topics on our list of things that we probably can consolidate services. This is an anything new. Okay. So is, would, is the bid would, already out? It would. Uh, yes. It would uh, involve a layoff. So there's unemployment to be considered. Mm -hmm. But can't we bid it two ways? Couldn't we bid everything and then also? We can ex we can expand the services. Right. And then we, we figure that other stuff out? Yeah, because we're going to have to rebid anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because the, the current <coughs> contract is only for a short period of time. Right. Uh, because we fired the other uh, cleaning company. Mm -hmm. so What's when this contract in? It's either six months or one year. I can't remember which. Mm -hmm. I think it's six months. It's six months. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have to remember too the police station is different than our other town buildings you know it's security it's uh, a lot more entailed than what we have oh uh, yeah they did quarry certified probably yeah. 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 well i would hope we would do that anyway i mean yeah i don't know if that's done though they probably also have to be bond we probably for have cleaning people uh, we don't do we, we should do quarry checks on uh, they don't have access to uh, personnel. They're coming in afterwards. But they're going into locked offices and have access to person yeah, um, records. Yeah, uh, yeah. In terms of that, yes. So it's Maybe more, we should more have more of a discussion. bonding. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we should. Yeah. All right. So what are we doing? We're going to have more well, discussion. It's on. It actually it's is on our list <laughs> of things to bring forward. Yes. So. Go ahead. This is number five. We, we just want more hours for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Ten hours doesn't cut it. Ten hours for a seven-day week, a twenty-four-hour facility. With you know, we're hosting classes now. Um, we house prisoners on a regular basis. You just so, replaced so. the rugs and painted all yeah, yourselves over there. You yourself. actually can't the prisoners like work it off. Uh, <laughs> not in this. No, state. I don't know if they. Uh, we're in the wrong state. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Where was your you former residence? Now? <laughs> actually, <laughs> just a you know, quick side. I actually had a <laughs> job interview where they actually had the prison next to the public works department, and they actually took trustees and they came in and worked with the workers. Mm -hmm. It was uh, teamsters love that. It was not non-union. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're rolling into full-time and part-time dispatch <laughs> salaries. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, and the sal like I said earlier, the salaries are pretty much uh, kept in the same as. FY15 right now, until we know about the increase in salaries. Uh, we did see an increase in dispatch, part time dispatch salaries this year. Uh, I think a lot of that had to do with training. We trained with three new, three new part time dispatchers over the last 12 months. So we saw an increase there for training wages. Nobody retired, or did Henry retire? No, everybody is still, still there. Fit. We're short some people. Over time, uh, the increase that was initially requested was just solely based on an increase in their hourly wages. Uh, I dropped back down to 20 mark because of the wage, the lack of wage increase at this point. Training wages again, it's just in an effort to increase training with dispatchers. We do have a 911 grant, it's an annual grant that we apply for now again for the second year. Uh, from what I understand, it's pretty much a given. We've gotten it both years that we applied for it, and they're all covered for 60 hours of training, although they don't necessarily cover all the expenses that go along with training. They cover 
the expense of, say, if the class costs money, uh, they will cover the expense as long as it's a certified class by 911. Uh, it doesn't cover like some of the specialty classes that we'd like to send them through. Um, so obviously we need to keep some money in that training fund. Mm -hmm. And you never know when funding might run out from 911. Uh, and that could stop next month for all I know. Uh, gas heat, from what I understand, new boilers are going to be much more efficient. We should see a reduction, uh, either decrease or increase. I wasn't really sure how that would work out. Is that line increased. item shared with the fire or no? It's not. No, we control that. Okay. Electricity, as everybody probably knows, the rates have gone up a lot. I know households are seeing increases of 100, 150 a month, so I can't imagine what we're going to see. Um, again, sort of a difficult one to actually estimate out. Yeah, we have a uh, two-year locked-in price at about 11.63 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's good until October 2016, uh, 17. 17. So, um, okay. So if you then, know your kilowatts. You and then we also have the 21% discount through the uh, net metering credit agreement. So that should work out to I'm just going to ballpark it here. Uh, what was it? 11? 11.63 cents per kilowatt hour. 11.63 times, you said 21% discount? And then there's a 21% <coughs> discount on electricity for the five buildings. Um, and the public safety complex is one of them. And I think that portion probably is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 700 Fifty dollars per month of a discount. We have seen a savings from that. I know. Which is yes. So let use that eleven sixty three number. So, so whatever the December bill is, probably that should be the basis for calculating now future. Yes. So future. will you provide that information back to the department heads who are budgeting the electricity? Yep. Okay. So then that number probably will change. It'll probably go down quite a bit. Some uh, water and sewer looks like we're right on with that. That's what's the talk if we don't pay it, they shut it off. <laughs> you can go across the street to the water and sewer person. <laughs> uh, legal expenses again. It was up for discussion we talked about in the last budget. Maybe reallocate and combine the two, however you decide to do it. Uh, seminar and training is, uh, again, the cost of, it's mainly for the cost of like bringing instructors in-house if we have to, to pay them to help train people, see so you know what that covers. Building maintenance is pretty much for supplies for the custodian, mm -hmm. for the most part. Just upkeep of the building. We did a lot of work in over the last year, so the mess kind of keeps things looking good. Can we go through and break out what's really a building maintenance item versus custodial in all of these budgets? So that once and for all we know that custodial means custodial, and if it's a building maintenance item, can't we wrap that into what we've got? For building maintenance overall with the highway department to cover the town buildings. I thought we did that already. We can look at that and make sure we do that. I don't All see right. why not. Yeah, we can take a look at that. I know it was done at a certain level, like big expenses. Yeah. If, uh, <clears throat> we went to replace a bunch of light bulbs. We deal with DPW and they work to get what we need. This is mainly for paper towels. Yeah, but everybody up so Maybe we can put it under custodial supplies, so just under custodial, you know, and yeah, we'll just be done with it so that... You mean reclassify it, rename it, so that it matches Identify up to what it, it is. And rename it, yeah. yes. Yeah. Might be a new account. Right. You know, Damien, you mentioned uh, grant when you were going through, which reminds me, um, in prior years, one of the other things we've asked for, too, is to make sure that any budgets that... Uh, or, you know, cost centers or departments that are receiving grant monies outside of the, you know, what we're doing from the general fund, that those are identified somewhere. So I don't know, um, and I know that many of them have dried up compared to what we used to get, but if you could 
maybe just provide a list of those. I know, I know Gail has all that. I can there's, yeah, or, get all the figures from her. Yeah. Yeah, she gets a copy of the grant once allocated, what's being paid out. She, she breaks it down kind of every once in a while and gives me a copy. Yeah, that might be a better. Could Gail give us that for all of the budgets from her? Like we had some small amount of money left over from the DARE grant that was allocated years ago, and I didn't know about it until I saw it last year. But exactly, that's why we started asking. There's a couple of grants in there. Yeah. I went through Gail a lot with you know, spending those yeah. on that line. Keep track of it very well. the uniforms for dispatchers, they don't necessarily have an overall uniform, but they're all, all required to wear uh, the same shirts right now. We've started the goal of pants. Um, right now, we've got plenty of shirts to last us the next two years. Um, so we reduced that line, hopeful that we can get everybody outfitted in pants or whatever she decides. He wants to do with the extra money at this so point. they don't have a uniform allowance they just get provided a shirt and a pair of pants is what you're shooting for well full timers all get a, somewhere in the area maybe three shirts some of them don't need three um, but i think we initially purchased for three for full timers and, and one for a part-timer we have found some of the part-timers would work more needed more some of the full-timers were content with what they had um, so we reduced that line Uh, equipment purchase. That's contractual, though, correct? Those are no, no, they don't have the uniforms. It's not a line. It's just something to purchase. I thought we, we negotiated that. They wanted it <laughs> to look and see. Yeah. Did we? It was something that was brought up. Yeah. We said no. So no. We said no. I said, no. I said, no. I said no. I thought we said yes. Mm -hmm. no. Well, you were at the meeting. Sure. It's yeah, they asked for it. They asked for an allowance or simply shirts to get shirts. Uniform. That may have been what it was. It may have been mm -hmm. one shirts and we got little shirts. Yeah. Yeah, they just <laughs> put a lot of buy them themselves, like the, the, my, the my memory tells me. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. They don't have like different names on them, do they? <laughs> no. That's why we got yeah. our yeah. So the, the big change then in what you, you requested compared to the 2% is really the um, addition of a, uh, the promotion, I guess, of a sitting individual to a supervisory position with a commensurate pay increase? Correct. And then a little bit of overtime? Correct, yeah. It was just the increases that you saw from my <coughs> request were just salary increases based on contractual language. Mm -hmm. um, custodian we touched on. And then the, uh, there's a small increase that was written in to promote an existing employee to a supervisory position to establish a dispatch supervisor, which is much needed. There was a temporary, well, about three months ago, change put in place several months ago relative to that. Is that working out okay for, for now? What was the change? Well, I remember you, you came in and you were, um, had written up a job description for a supervisory position or whatever, and we basically said not now, and then I think that you were trying to work it out so that... It was a collateral uh, duty for one of the officers? Yeah, so one of the officers who was there was actually... Uh, never actually formulated because of uh, union involvement pretty early on, and uh, it just never got worked out between myself and the fire chief, and then the, the chief search kind of came to the head, and, Sort of a lot, you know, left the new police chief and fire chief to guard, and they want to put in that spot, made more sense at the time. Okay, so so the the issue at hand still there. is still there, still there. Still and it still needs to be addressed. Correct. Right now, it's basically being overseen by myself and the two line sergeants, but we need somebody focusing more on dispatch. Mm -hmm. There's too many responsibilities, too many things for them to do between training and uh, sh open shifts. Uh, you know, behavioral accountability, you name it, there's a whole bunch of things we need to get done in that. Policy and procedures. Policies, certainly I would hope that the supervisor would be able to help with that, even if it's just doing research for whoever's writing the policy. And that can reduce time. What's the equipment purchase? Equipment purchase is mainly just to replace you know, something minor price to replace, or to be a phone. Hopefully, a new console, all things are 
Yeah, well. that we have had to replace some pieces of the console, but uh, the company I think has been taken care of. Yeah. Under warranty. Yeah. Nothing major, just uh, laminate breaking off the edge and they bring up a whole new top top up. Nice. So any other questions about communications? Before we wrap up the budget discussion, um, Mr. Nixon gave us the actual budget book, which has all the other ones in it. I, I kind of want to point out something, and you can help me with this if you can, Mr. Nixon. In each budget, if there's um, if there's colas or steps, actually for steps, um, they're listed at the bottom, so you can see how much that actual number is. And then there's a cola, which you just use 2%, right? So that's that's already in the book for each broken down by each group, so you can see it for <coughs> each unit. So that that would be a number if we actually went that route. You can see what that additional number is. Just it's kind of neat. I have it broken out, and I have to do it myself. Oh, so that was that was an informational. Yeah, that's <laughs> you don't have to sit there and try to figure it out yourself. It's right there. It's I thought there was a question in there. Yeah, I was waiting for the question. Right no, no, it's there for you to use. All right. So you there should, you should have an FTE uh, analysis for every department. Yes, we have that. So the colas are two, using a two percent. Two percent. And the steps is using whatever the current contract is. Right, which is three and a half percent. And non union is three and a half three percent and a half. for stuff so as well. It should be three and a half percent. All right. And what are the steps based on? Uh, the steps are based upon the, uh, um, the, the classification plan that we have uh, for FY15 uh, that are applied to the non union, to the uh, to the uh, exempt employees and then the union employees have um, uh, negotiated their own compensation plan. So dispatch and DPW are within the, the, uh, the regular compensation plan. Police are separate, they have their own. Do we have that summarized in here? Um, no, but I can make sure that you have a copy of it all. Thank you. All right, so any other budget questions? Uh, and the reason why it's not in there is because we haven't negotiated the contracts. And so uh, I can give you the 15 numbers, not the 16. So right now. Can I ask one more on the car, the police car? I, this last year, we uh, the idea has been to get one a year, whether it's not a capital or the budget, get one a year, and then one retires each year. So when you said, the, the count that you gave that includes that we bought this year's two cars, right? Okay, that were okay. Those are all. Those have been purchased. Those are in there. And the one that you said is off the road. Is that the one that we contemplated moving off the road, or does that mean that we're two down? And so we didn't actually gain any ground by getting two cars this year. One was completely eliminated, and one is down for mechanical reasons right now. Okay. <clears throat> but it's okay. been a good car, you said. Yeah. Because, you know, when when we talk when when they look at their fleet of cars, they don't necessarily take the oldest car and say, Yeah, that's the one that's leaving this year because in the last few years we've had younger cars that were, had bugs mm -hmm. and problems and it was better to get rid of the bugs and the problems and keep the older car that's running fine than to just do it based on age. So they've been doing an analysis in um, they should be able to tell you, you know, what two cars or one car they're ready to move on from based off of what they've done the last couple of years. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, All right. There are some, some of the older cars that are just in better working order. They get driven less for whatever reason, different shifts, less officers working on a shift, whatever the case, and they just seem to last longer. But yeah, we have eliminated one and the other one is just on its way out. So essentially, we caught up with the two that we purchased this past fiscal year. So continuing on that one car rotation would be. Okay. 
Yes. Who services the cruisers? They're serviced by Town Highway um, to a point. Some body work is done at Alley Auto, and a lot of times they'll out to the dealer if there's something significant or it's coming over. The <coughs> is there a log on each cruiser for total expenditures that were spent from the day that cruiser was bought? I don't know if DPW keeps any type of log. He keeps reports on it. I don't know if he has. <coughs> A detailed analysis on what's been spent on the car. I know he keeps reports on what he does on each car. See, I, I really think that uh, I I took care of a fleet, and that was a key important role in it. What does that piece of equipment cost you to maintain per year? Because once it crosses the line, that it's time. Well, Brian, if you called up Brian right now and said, Brian, which one of these cruisers has to go this year because we're going to replace one? He'll tell you because he'll say, look. This is what, you know, this is the vehicle's life. In the last six months, I've had to do this, that, and another thing. And you know this is coming next, so he's, he'd recommend that would be the one that would go. I know, but further, he should, he should tell very, you right. as a selectman. Right. What have we spent in this thing right. since the existence, purchase of it? What have, what have we spent in this one, this one, and that one? He should be able to give you that figure because that determines that that is eating you out of house and home, get out. Right. Anything else? Nope. So we're, we're off and running on budget season. I think we got some underinflated. Uh, <laughs> well, once again, Acting Chief, thank you for all you've done. Um, new Chief Mike, we'll be talking soon. Like I said, this is Perspective, new chief Mike. Right. He could still turn us down. That's right. He That's could. Right. He could That's walk. He could walk at any moment. He could get. He could look at this budget and say it's not going to work. <laughs> I gotta go. Actually, the, the the strangest part about it is sitting here listening, and, and uh, I'm sure it's common for every budgetary meeting, but everybody seems to be right. That's really what it comes down to. It's really simple. Uh, like you were saying earlier, you know, adding adding officers hurts you in one area, but it will cut the overtime in another, but then you're adding uniform allowance and all the other things as well. It's just Yeah, well but I mean it's it's something that we need to do collectively. Yeah. And when I mean collectively it's it's the chief of the police department talking to the select board, sitting down with the unions and saying, you know, how do we how do we want this picture to look at the end? Because if everybody tries to get what we want, it's not going to fly. If we have people that want to stay here and move forward and, and make some advances in the department that are better for the employees, the better for the town, I think we can do that. But I mean, it, it's going to take some you know, people sitting down and, and flushing out some ideas. But I think it can be lots done. Lots of ideas. Well, yeah, lots of flushing. ideas. Flushing. Lots of flushing. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a lot of water. I think, I think, you know, we've, we've received a lot of information in a short period of time relative to the past. And things are changing. It's not, it's not 10 years ago by any stretch. So we have to, we have to look at what's best for the town of Hadley. So okay. we'll be talking. So, do we have any announcements? I have none. I have no announcements. I, uh, I, I do want to just see if the board wants to talk a little bit about the transition that we're going to go through. Uh, Chief Shanley has an assignment until March 5th. Uh, uh, are we going to have uh, Chief Shanley stay the chief until March 5th? which I think would be a good idea. I think that's only common sense to have a transition where... I thought this was an exec the executive session discussion. No, that's the... No, we can talk you, about You can if you'd like to do that. We're we didn't talk put it on about the budget. contract oh. in the... You didn't, didn't put it on the agenda. agenda. Yeah, it is on the agenda. It Re certainly is. Oh, and yeah, transition plan. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we're good. Good. <laughs> we won't be getting any emails. I was getting a little worried there. Yeah. 
emails, yeah, phone well calls. Yeah, like what? You can read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I think March 5th is when his term is up as acting chief. Right. I think that's about right if we if we move right along. I, I'll, I'll take a contrary opinion. Okay. And this is no offense to anybody, <laughs> but it's just, um, you know, we're, we're coming up, we're going to be rolling into town meeting. We're, we're in the middle of dealing with a budget. We've got somebody, I mean, it's a, it's a difficult spot for both of these guys to be in, I think. You've got one person who's, um, you know, if I looked at the language in the, in the agreement that was inked with, inked, did I just say that, whatever it was, <laughs> with uh, our, our acting chief, it says that it was through March 5th, but that was because we really had no idea, like, the timing of the interviews and when we, if somebody had to give notice or not. Right. Um, and I believe that, I can't find it right now, but the language reads that he was guaranteed to be in that position through March 5th, but it was at the discretion of the select board to shorten that depending on how the, the hiring went, and, unless I misread that. I'm so well, where we are though in the hiring process is yes. we haven't done any of the, finished any of the background stuff yet, or have we? No, we no that's, that was really gonna be the, the only uh, it would be up to the discretion of the board. I have an appointment for uh, psych evaluation <laughs> next Monday. That was okay. The earliest, that was well, that's the good. The doctor so I would think so as soon as that's completed, then then we could have a discussion right. about the timing. But I, I think to put uh, make it definitively tonight and say it's definitely March fifth. I don't think we should be well, doing I'm, it. I was well, saying I'm glad he's on until March fifth. I mean, yeah, want, as yeah. long as. I personally think we're going to find March 5th is going to probably work out to be the right I could say time. it's a tentative action that that might take place at that time. If all things fall into place. Yeah, I mean, it would depend on the extent of how you know, good the your background how, is. How and, good your psychological mm -hmm. testing right. is. Yeah. Yes. Some questions about well, actually, we already, we already know it gets well, a little... It lasts <laughs> two hours. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> like, yeah. but I, mean, I get to come I, back I to think, this rank, or am I just done altogether? But I, but I, what I, think, <laughs> I think the important part of what we're talking about here is, is obviously, um, I think Mike will pass all his tests. I think we'll sit down and negotiate a contract, and we'll move forward there. And then, obviously... Mm, Acting Chief Sandley would be returned t to the department back at his rank, but we just promoted a sergeant, so we're down. We're, we 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 still have that open s sergeant slot, so I think it's more than affects just the two officers, mm -hmm. uh, the two people sitting in this room. There's there's another spot that's going to have to be filled. So I think well, we, has, there is an acting sergeant also. Well, I know, right but now. that I know, but I'm saying. But so uh, I, it's, it's more than just the two of them, is what yeah, I'm saying. I, I but I think I think we're gonna find this is our last meeting this month. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we decide anything tonight in the executive session, <laughs> we won't see it again until the first of February. Right. Right. Okay, and then we have to let someone do whatever they do with whatever whatever we offer them. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to have everything done by the third meeting in February if we want to change that date right March 5th right so I think March 5th is actually a very comfortable amount of time to work in and doesn't rush us or the prospective candidate in making any decisions so I think we're gonna find that we just locked into a, a good time right and and saying that March 5th is what it is for now and, and mm -hmm. going from there will we'll work out okay I also think it's very important that uh, people know who the chief is and that we have one chief. Uh, and so that, that talking about this transition is very important to maintaining continuity of command. And make the transition the, easier for everybody. Yeah, and I thought we had left it that didn't we charge them with coming up with a transition plan? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like we're over. No, we. We haven't. We said we were on time last night. In executive session. Or, or now we can talk about it. I think it'll all work itself out, and it'll probably 
like like Guilford said, by the time we do all dot the I's and cross the T's, it'll be sometime in the middle of February, we'll have everything wrapped up and we'll be able to sit down with the two people involved and say, okay, when we make this change, how are we gonna make it all fit in the department? Chain of war, chain of command, all that. So I, I yeah, and, and I'd like to hear it from the two of you. The two of them. Right. Right. Before I'm yeah, and let them guide us in our decision relative to when that transition occurs. I just I don't feel that we should put a stake in the ground and say oh, it is yeah, right. March fifth tonight right. because they may have a different opinion. Right. And that we haven't heard that yet. Okay. That's what I'm saying. There is some custody things that have to be taken care of too, isn't there? Transfer of custody or some of that? Is that most of that most of that can be done gradually. Okay. I think. Just nothing has to be signed, turned over, that type of stuff. No. Just a question. Nothing that would have to be done immediately. No. And nothing is very formal either that I can think of. Um, really? <coughs> Yeah, and the way the language does read, it says it can be either extended by mutual agreement of the parties or shortened at the discretion of the select board, but the target date is March 5th. So we've got room on either way. Right. The right. biggest concern, I think, at least on my end, and we've had some conversation about it, would be as if it, it got rushed and we just weren't aware of it because we got shifted in the middle of this. Right. You know, I would have to go back to a bit of a shift and you've got we've got an officer going to the academy in the beginning of February, so we're gonna be down a full time officer. Right. So we want to make sure we had enough time to at least coordinate putting me into the right shift, filling the shift properly, you know, yeah. rather than February fourth. By the way, next Monday is when the transition's right. Mm -hmm. That would really when when do you have when do you have to bid that shift? When shift bid end? Our shift bids run uh, four month periods. So January, this, this shift bid it will last well into you know, whatever transition process we have, January, February, March, and April. So okay. we'll be falling into. We, He'll be in the next. The next. What, uh, right. But what we've always done when there was ever a change in status, uh, what Chief Huckowitz used to do was do a rebid immediately. Okay. At that point in time, it doesn't really hurt anything. The only thing it would affect is. I'm still handling all the scheduling, so if there was a change after the schedule was completed for the next month, we would simply have to add him into the schedule and make whatever changes are necessary. We also need to consider, um, assuming I pass all the evaluations, um, putting an ad in the paper and beginning the process to hire another full-timer to fill that vacancy. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same boat we're in right now with right. overtime. The sooner we can get that spot filled, the better off we will be in the as far as the overtime goes. Right. And deciding if that's the best place to place an ad for the cost benefit. Don't plus you have to post it in house first? Based on the budget, it's not the best place. Yes, post. I didn't think so. I, I, was, I was listening to you, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you have to post that in house first? I don't. I don't know. Part time position. Really that. No, part timers aren't in the union. Yeah. No, so part timers are specials are not. All are. So, yeah, we don't have that requirement. You don't no. have to pull city house first. We also have to decide what to do with the acting sergeant. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's and there's some moving parts. There, that's absolutely correct. There's more than just the two of us. Right. right. Okay. Especially depending upon when this happens. If it happens in the middle of a month or something like that. It's going to affect a lot more than just personnel. But it's something that we can't deal with. Right. Okay. All right. And so the only thing we're talking about in executive session is a contract negotiation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm making a motion to go into executive session, contract negotiations to conduct strategy sessions and prepare for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, chief of police. 